Whether you're making a role-playing game, management game, strategy game, first-person shooter, puzzle game, or any other genre under the sun, it's pretty likely that at some point in time you're going to want to design some kind of system for your player to hold items and have a place for them to sort through or interact with them in some way. The specifics of what this system will look like will definitely vary from genre to genre, but the one thing that's sure is that you'll need to build the logic for collecting items, displaying them, managing them, and probably removing them. So allow me to ready my rucksack and pull out the materials I've gathered over the years to help you put something like this together. Hi there, I'm Matt and welcome to Game Dev Guide. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can build an inventory system in Unity. We're going to look at how we can build an index of inventory items for our game through scriptable objects. We're then going to build out a system for those objects to be added to, stacked and removed from, and we're also going to look at how we can build out a UI to visually interact with our inventory system. As an additional bonus, we're also going to build a script that will automatically generate an icon for each of our items in the UI. Before we get started though, I'd like to take a minute to thank the sponsor of this video, Core. Core is a free PC gaming platform where anyone can play, create and share single player or multiplayer PC games. It's powered by Unreal Engine, meaning that you can create games with high quality AAA graphics and is available to download for free on the Epic Store. If you're a beginner looking to get started in game development, it's perfect as there's no coding required and there are thousands of free music, sound and art assets to choose from, so it's possible to create a game by yourself faster than ever before. Core helps you build games from scratch and includes built-in multiplayer functionality. Many of you who are watching are more advanced users, so while it's not required, if you did want to get more hands-on, you can as Core allows you to kitbash your own 3D models and write your own game logic via the Lua scripting language. Core offers a 50% revenue share with its game creators through the Core Perks program, and they've asked me to mention that a number of creators have been able to pay their bills, buy their dream cars, and quit their day jobs thanks to this program. They've also asked me to tell you that they're currently hosting the Game Creator Challenge with $13,000 in total prizes. They're collaborating with various YouTubers from the gaming community to lead a group of creators to complete in a mega game jam. You can join a YouTuber you want to support and be a part of their team, and if you submit a game that you've made with Core, you could win up to $1,000 in prizes. The deadline is December 15th, and you can use the link in the description below to learn more about the event. Core is free to download, free to play, and free to create. So use the link in the description below to download Core for free and join the Core community today. Thanks again to Core for sponsoring the video. Now let's get started building our inventory system. So I've got a little adventure game here that I've been working on, and I'd like to add some gameplay play relating to inventory items. For instance, our player character would like to send a letter to their pen pal. However, the postman is here, and they haven't written the letter yet, so they're going to need to wander around the apartment and gather the things they need to write their letter. We're then going to have them combine the items together into a final letter that they can give to the postman. This means then that the first thing we're going to want to do is create the concept of an item for our game. Let's create a new script and name it inventory item data. At the top, we'll change it from a mono behavior to a scriptable object and create a create asset menu attribute to allow us to add new assets to the project easily. Let's first add an ID string for our item so that we can reference it easily. Then let's add a field for the display name of our item and a sprite for our items icon, which we're going to generate in a moment. With the script set up, we'll go ahead and create the assets in our project and hook up the relevant data. Now, let's look at how we can generate icons for our items. I've got a separate scene here, which I'll be using as an editor-only tool whenever I want to create icons for my items. We basically need to write a script in here that will save the camera's output to an image in our project. So first, I'll drag one of my prefabs out into the scene and create a camera and then size up my shot. Next, we'll create a script that can take a screenshot from the camera and save it to a folder in our project. I want the icon to have a transparent background, so I need to make sure I set the camera to depth only. Okay, so now our camera can save its output to a file, we're ready to process the rest. If all of the items were the same size, I'd probably spawn them into the scene automatically as part of a batch process. However, in this instance, as all of the items are different sizes and there's just a few of them, I'm going to manually place and frame each one of them to make sure that their icons all look good. However, I am going to have our processing script screenshot them and then assign them to our scriptable objects automatically. In our screenshotting tool, we'll create two lists, one for our scene objects and the other for their data assets. Then upon calling the screenshot event, we can iterate through each of the game objects, take the photo, and then link that photo to the corresponding object. 
By default, our import settings will cause the icons to be imported as textures. We won't actually be able to find them as sprites. So we need to somehow ensure that any image imported into this folder is created as a sprite. Thankfully, we can use this handy script from the Unity manual to define import settings based on the folder the assets are in. Once this script is added to an editor folder in our project, all we need to do is create a preset in here. Then, let's ensure that these are set to the UI type and that they're marked as transparent. Now, all images in this folder will be imported based on this preset. This means then that all we need to do is enter play mode and run the screenshot process. And there we have it. Our data assets now have icons. So our items are set up. The next thing we need to do is build our actual inventory. Let's create a new script called inventory system. This doesn't need to be a mono behavior, but for the purposes of this demo, we're going to have our inventory system as an instanced Unity object so that we can view it in the inspector and debug it. You could, however, set this as just a normal class and construct it in some other kind of game manager elsewhere, though. Anyway, we're also going to create a new wrapper class called inventory item. This will act as the actual instance version of our data and will be useful to determine additional metadata around our item that our system will want to use. In here, we'll create a reference to our data and create a constructor where we'll pass and set the data. We'll also set a stack size variable and methods to add or remove the number of items in the stack, which will come in handy later. In our inventory system script, we'll create a new list of inventory items and create methods to add and remove new items. Notice how I've also set up a dictionary in here. This is so that I can grab the item stack more easily with the reference data. When we're trying to add an item, if it exists in our inventory already, we'll add to the stack. If it doesn't, we'll create a new instance of the item and add it to our inventory. When we're removing, we're simply doing the inverse, and if our stack size hits zero, we'll remove the item from our inventory. With the basic framework set up, I think we're ready to scatter our items around the apartment. I'll grab my objects and put them into place. I've scattered an envelope, paper, and a pen to various interaction points in the apartment. I've also decided that the player should need to find a number of stamps in order to be able to post their letter, so I've scattered a few different sets of stamps around the place too. Now I need to add some logic to actually pick these items up and add them into our inventory. So firstly, I've created a little pickup script on our character, which is taking advantage of the IK system we built previously. When the pickup method is called, I'm simply stepping up the weight on the IK and then stepping it back down. Doing it with IK means that I'm able to move the hand target around and the character will actually lean towards the object to pick it up. Let's create a new script that we can use to handle the pickup for each of our items. When our player is in the vicinity of the item and uses the interact action, they'll call pickup on the item, which will then add the item to the inventory and remove the object from our scene. I've also added a singleton reference to our inventory manager, which right now is an instance. So we'll need to add the inventory system script into our game somewhere to instance it. Again, there's no real reason for this to be a mono behavior, but for debug purposes, it's useful. With that all together, we should now be ready to pick up items. If we play our game, our character should now be able to stand near an object, lean towards it and pick it up. With our character now able to pick things up, we should probably visualize our inventory on the screen somewhere. There are a lot of different types of inventory menus and it largely depends on the style of game you're making, so I'm not gonna spend too long going over building the UI itself. If you want some inspiration for different types of menus, you can always check out references and see what best suits your game. Either way, the underlying concepts to build a functional menu from our system here are the same. So for now, we'll just go for a standard inventory bar at the top of our screen here. I've built out a bar up here with a horizontal layout component and a content size fitter. That way the inventory bar resizes as we add and remove items. The item slot is a prefab that includes a child image as a placeholder for our item icon, a label for the name of the item, and a slot to show the current number in our inventory. The slot script contains a set method, which when called adds a reference to our item into the slot and then sets the icon, as well as the stack text if there's more than one of our items in the inventory. For the inventory UI itself, I've added a manager script, which listens for add or remove events from the inventory system and updates the slots each time it changes. If we play the game and head to one of our items, once we interact with it, the item is removed from the scene and appears in our inventory bar. Awesome. So that's the gist really, but as regular viewers know, there's always more we can do. So what if we wanted to check if an item exists in our inventory before we can interact with it? 
For instance, the envelope model I'm using is already packed, so why don't we force the player to have the paper, pen, and stamps ready before they can pick up the envelope? We'll need to update our interaction script to be able to check for an inventory item in order to work. Let's create a new struct called item requirement, and in here, we'll allow for an inventory item data reference as well as a required value. In our pickup script, we'll add a list of these structs, and we'll also add an option to remove the reference items from our inventory upon picking up the current one. We'll then adjust our pickup method to check for multiple reference items before allowing us to pick up the item, and if required, tell our inventory to remove the reference items too. Then we'll just set things up in our inspector, and we should be able to gather our items and create our finished letter ready to give to our mailman. So that's the basics of building an inventory system. As always, I'm sure there's a lot more you can do with it, but hopefully this has given you an idea of where to start putting something together. And that's it for today's video. Just wanted to say thanks again to Core for sponsoring the video. Be sure to follow the link in the description to get started using it for free. And remember to check out the Game Creator Challenge event. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and let me know your thoughts down below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as you'll get to know when new videos go live. Alternatively, if you'd like to see more from me first, you can click the link on screen now to check out another video. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again next time.